My story with Casimus disease began in around 1990 uh, when I was experiencing reflux problems. I went in for a routine chest x-ray and the doctor says, there's clearly something there. It came back with uh, a di diagnosis of Casimus disease. One of my goals when I was uh, released from the hospital was to find out everything I could about Casimus disease and started doing research on the internet. Back then there wasn't a lot of information on the internet available. So I started collecting data and developing a website for the, the data that I did, did find, uh, which started out being a national uh, event, Casimus Disease Organization, turned into an international organization when we start, started getting hits from international communities all over the world. When I was sick, I think the hardest thing to deal with was not knowing. Um, just coming to terms with, you know, okay, this could be the end because nobody could tell me what was wrong. I had multiple diagnoses that weren't even close. For yourself, um, what are the most challenging aspects of the disease for yourself or were historically? Mine was a, a lifestyle change. Um, I was very active. Um, I worked 60 hours a week and when I got sick everything changed and when I got better it, they had changed again and I found out that some things I couldn't do anymore but you know some things I could the same as I always did and you just have to slow down you have to eat better you have to take care of yourself um, you have to be more, more conscious about it. You know, you really can't indulge yourself too much in extreme things. You know, I wouldn't say that you need to go, you know, climbing the top of Mount Anniburst or nothing, but, you know, just understanding yourself. And that's the main thing because I went from full time work to not full time work anymore. And it just takes a little bit to get used to. And it's, really hard not to lose hope, but you just have to stay fighting. I mean, you can't give up. There's, it's just not an option. Nobody knew what was wrong with me. I was experiencing night sweats, weight loss, neuropathy, and sleeping pro proved to be very difficult. Apparently, I may have been my misdiagnosed again. Finally, in June 2004, I was correctly diagnosed with multicentric Castleman's disease. At the time, all the research we could find indicated a two-year survival rate, and it had already been over a year since I started experiencing symptoms of CD. Rare diseases don't discriminate. They know no boundaries. They'll affect anyone. What's the prevalence of orphan diseases among Americans and international? Well, the NIH was the one who identified that there's 7,000 rare diseases. That's 2,000 more than when I started at NORD over 17 years ago. In the U.S., and it's def defined in this country as a disease that affects less than 200,000 individuals. And in Europe, it is defined as less than 1 in 2,000 citizens. Castleman's disease was first described in 1954 by Benjamin Castleman's at uh, Massachusetts General Hospital. And about three years later, he had a collection of 13 patients which he published on, uh, which uh, at the time must have been a tremendous effort to, to get that many cases together in a, sh in a relatively short period of time. Based on clinical evidence, uh, Castleman's disease can be subdivided into the unicentric form uh, which is localized and generally has a benign uh, presentation, usually presenting in the mediastinum, sometimes in the neck, and sometimes, sometimes as an intra-abdominal mass. In contrast, the multicentric uh, is much more aggressive and by definition is diffuse. Unicentric uh, involves a single uh, lymph node group. Multicentric has uh, multiple lymph nodes, usually multi-organ involvement and systemic symptoms.
there's a very good reason to promote centralized care uh, uh, of Castleman's disease. This is not only a rare disorder, it's a complex one as well. Um, and the average community oncologist may, may see in his career only one patient with Castleman's disease, a disease that you don't treat, you can't get a feel for, and you can't uh, 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 direct care in an optimal uh, fashion. I think that every Castleman's disease uh, patient should be seen by an experienced physician in this in the, in, with the disease uh, and direct uh, therapy. Uh, hopefully in the future some of the therapies can be given uh, at home. Um, and I think that the outcome uh, of this the, the disease uh, now will be much better than what is published uh, on the internet. What are the barriers that you have, in, or are there any barriers that you have that would prevent or hinder the treatment or research of Castleman's disease in Europe? I think for Castleman's disease, we have to uh, remind it's a rare disease first. It's a rare disease and uh, patients having rare disease are well informed in the majority of cases. For that, we need to have uh, doctors we can respond to these patients in an excellent situation. I mean, knowing perfectly the disease and organizing uh, the, the treat treatment and diagnosis before in an excellent way. Well, in Australia, we have, um, I suppose, a socialized uh, uh, medicine where uh, drugs are available through what we call the Pharmaceutical Benefit Scheme, uh, the PBS. And what happens is that for high cost drugs, there is a restriction uh, under specific indications. Um, I think that the suggestions that, w that were heard today to bring in a wide panel of experts uh, from around the world with uh, multiple different expertise to really sit down and write a definitive document will be such a help to patients and also, I think, uh, in the research communities and the regulatory communities who are looking to sort of say, what do we do with Castleman's disease? Because at this point, it's such an enigmatic disease. The uh, room today is just a representation of uh, what we believe the ultimate venue will be for the information that we present and that we discuss. Uh, our intent from the very beginning was to recognize that there, given the disparate nature of this disease and the rare disease context, there was no way we could have all the interested parties in one room anywhere. Uh, but everyone can access the internet, more or less. And so there is a strategy in place to ensure that all the information that is presented today uh, is cataloged and archived and put onto the website and that we have, uh, we have done the right things to make sure that when people look for Castleman's disease information, uh, they find this information.